Why can't everything in life be certain? When you make a decision, how do you know it's the right one? If you're selling your house, why can't someone just tell you exactly how long it will take? When you go to the doctor, why can't they tell you 100% that you're fine and you will live to 100? If you suffer from constant worrying or generalised anxiety disorder, you probably have an intolerance of uncertainty. So, how can you be certain? Well, I have some bad news and some good news. The bad news is that you can't be 100% certain about anything. But the good news is you can improve your ability to tolerate uncertainty. And if you can do that, then the worry and anxiety that may be crippling you, mentally, emotionally and even physically, can be significantly reduced. Cognitive behavioural therapy is the most effective psychological treatment for anxiety and worry. And the most powerful tool in CBT is the behavioural experiment. So I'm going to teach you how to do behavioural experiments to improve your intolerance of uncertainty. Now I'll warn you, it's not easy, but it is effective. First, make a list of situations, activities or events that typically trigger feelings of uncertainty and anxiety. Start with situations that cause mild discomfort and gradually work up to more challenging ones. Rate the level of uncertainty and anxiety that each situation would bring. For example, you could start with a small change to your routine. Maybe having to take a different route to work due to a road closure. In the middle of your list could be going on a day trip with the family. At the end of the list could be something you've always wanted to do but have been too scared, like moving house. You'll know whether each item is valid because as soon as you think of it, the negative thoughts will start. What if I get stuck in traffic? And I'm late for work? What if the day trip is a disaster and the children don't enjoy it? What if the house sale falls through? Now choose the easiest situation on your list, in this case the different route to work. You're going to do an experiment. You're going to take a different route to work even though there are no road closures. So already this may be causing you some anxiety. Indulge your anxiety just for a moment. What is the worst thing that can happen? Write it down. There is a link to a behavioural experiment form in the pinned comments if you want to use that. If you have a tendency to catastrophize, you may conclude that you'll be late, get in trouble, lose your job and consequently lose your home. Now here is the real difficult bit. You're going to do the experiment without employing any behaviours to seek certainty. So no getting up two hours earlier, no asking your colleagues how long it will take, or if there are roadworks. It's okay to check a map or use your sat nav, but no excessive planning. There's no need to look at Google Earth so you know what every street looks like. For these experiments to work, you have to allow yourself a little uncertainty. Now do the experiment. Drive to work via a slightly different route. After the experiment, write down what happened. Then compare what happened with what you feared would happen. Maybe nothing happened. You arrived on time. Maybe you were two minutes late, but no one noticed. Maybe you were five minutes late and your boss questioned you. You explained you tried a different route and she said, that way always takes longer. But did you get in trouble? Did you lose your job and home? Probably not. Of course, when choosing these experiments, only you know your circumstances, but do try to take at least a small risk, something that makes you feel mildly uncomfortable. When you've done this experiment, as long as it had no serious negative effects, do it again. Maybe the same route, maybe another one. What you'll find is that you will feel less anxious each time. You will be better able to tolerate the uncertainty. When you feel comfortable tolerating this small uncertainty, try the next experiment on your list. If you're doing something like a family day trip, again make sure that there are no certainty seeking behaviours. Of course, it makes sense to book your tickets to the safari park online beforehand, but you don't need to write a plan of what animals you go to see and in what order. It makes sense to use your sat nav and find out the predicted journey time. But you don't need to plan alternative routes and seek reassurance from people whether the route planner predictions are accurate. If you're going on holiday, just go and decide what you're going to do when you get there. Don't have every minute planned weeks before you go. Yes, you're going to get anxious thoughts, but again, write them down. Allow yourself to catastrophize and afterwards reflect on what actually happened. Most importantly, 
what you've learned from the experiment. Did your kids really hate it and never want to do a day trip with you again just because you ran out of time to see the zebras? Did you get lost and you were so late you had to cancel the trip and return home? Behavioural experiments work because they disprove many of the beliefs that drive your anxiety. Beliefs like, I have to plan everything or it will be a disaster. I have to have a routine or everything will fall apart. I have to double check everything or something terrible will go wrong. The more you do behavioural experiments, the more you'll be able to tolerate uncertainty, the less anxious you will feel, and the less physical symptoms of anxiety you will have. You will also realise that a lot of your certainty-seeking behaviours are not necessary, and as you reduce them, you'll find that you have more time and more energy. And not only will you feel more relaxed, so will the people around you. I will be making some more videos with ideas for behavioural experiments for worry and generalised anxiety, so make sure you subscribed and clicked on the notification bell. And check out my GAD playlist. Take care now.